Hello, beautiful people. In the last episode, we discussed audience, logline, and subject. Now we're going to tie audience and subject together with this magical relationship that, that we call perspective. Perspective. See, I did a pun. Um, perspective is the relationship between your audience and your subject. It is how your audience sees your subject. It is how your audience sees the story which makes up your finished film. Rear Window is a really interesting example of perspective at work. In fact, the entire film is based around the limitation of perspective to a character, to that of a character who can only see the world through the binoculars through his rear window. To choose the perspective of your story, you need to know what is the most important thing for your audience to see and hear in order to become interested in the later developments of your film. What is the most important things that need to be put across? Then you can ask yourself, does the perspective I choose have any privileged or restrictive access to the events depicted? are things happening off screen that they don't know about. Again, farces are very good examples of this. Also, murder mysteries. Actually, a film that does a really good job of playing around with perspective is E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Okay, now, firstly, I want to make a point about how perspective will influence your structure, which we'll get into a, another episode. Let's look at the actual structure of the story. It starts moments before the alien is stranded on Earth, and the film ends pretty much as soon as he leaves. We don't get any insight into what his life was back on his home planet, either before or afterwards. It's entirely told from the perspective of Elliot the young boy. There's something really cool that Spielberg did, which was he changed the sp perspective to a child's eye view. Why is this important? Well, because it's being told from the perspective of a child, and he's showing you the world as that child sees it. Now, I'm sure some of you feel that since this is about screenwriting, I should be showing you some actual screenwriting. Well, I'll indulge you for a second. Here, I'm going to delete the reference to Joyce making eye contact with the man and instead make her avoid eye contact to look at his shoes. Here you can see how perspective directly affects not only the words on the page, but also how the scene plays out, because if she doesn't see his gold teeth, how does that change her opinion of it? This is also a really great example of what screenwriters like to call writing in the camera angles. Rather than actually saying whether it's a close-up or a medium shot, we already know what the camera angle is. Clockwork Orange is another example of a film that really plays with perspective because the entire world is presented through the distorted perspective of Alex. Not only are we just seeing the events sort of over his shoulder, as it were, but we're actually seeing the events distorted by his warped morality, which makes us feel sick. And that's, re and that's really uh, integrating and embedding the perspective of a character, or just any perspective, into the fabric of the film. It directly affects every scene. Perspective is just such a, pow just such a powerful tool. Not only does it tell you where the story ends and finishes, because of course, once you're doing it from the perspective of a character, then it can only, then it can only start. It puts this conceptual frame around everything which helps you determine what is important. What are the most important things that your audience needs to see and hear? Remember, sound is also an important part of perspective. Um, if you're doing a film ab about a deaf person, you may choose to, cho to show it from their perspective. That means everything can't be heard. You know, you can play around with the way you play it. You may decide to just not have any sound at all in that film because you're telling it from their perspective. Now, I really want to hammer home that the reason why, we, why perspective is so important is because it's literally down to how you literally see and hear the world and observe it. You, as a screenwriter, have a unique point of view and certain observations about the world that you are trying to communicate through the film medium. That is why you need to communicate what you see and what you think is important for the audience to see. Because remember, there's a lot of extraneous facts. There's a lot of extraneous facts that can either make or break your film. You need to be very clear about what your audience needs to see and hear. And that determines your perspective. Well, I don't recommend it. Of course you can actually change perspective throughout the film. Um, Enter the Void, Doctor Strange Love, Rashomon are all great examples of films that deliberately play with the changing of perspective which is actually integral to the plot. In fact, uh, I would say that all farces, is, oh my god, get under the bed! Farces all use perspective as an intrinsic part of their plots because it's all about hiding information from other characters. The perspective affects the plot. 
even in plays such as Sophocles, Oedipus Tyrannus, the facts of Oedipus's marriage and uh, the murder of his father, they, spoiler alert, they, they don't change through, throughout the plot of the story. All that changes is his and his wife's awareness of those facts. Perspective is just so important, but it takes on a new kind of uh, literalness in film. Because, for example, as we said with uh, Rear Window, with uh, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, the physical placement of the camera is affected by the perspective. And again, with A Clockwork Orange. So, how do you actually go about uh, imbuing your screenplay with perspective? Once again, think about what are the most important things that I need to emphasize for the audience to be interested in the finished film? What are the most important things for them to see in here? And then kind of build a hierarchy from the most important to the kind of important, and then it's kind of, well, actually, I don't need to show these things. These kind of things, the audience doesn't really care. And that can be ellipsis, which we'll get to in structure. The other thing, does this perspective have any privileged or even restricted access? And the next episode, we'll take a detour into character, and then we'll come back to perspective when we talk about structuring and outlining and plotting and even asymmetry. Till then, I'm Constantine. Please stay sublime.